Hey folks, Rich here at rcmforward.com. Thanks for checking out this video on the uh, Freewing Ultimate 750 millimeter uh, biplane from Motion RC. Uh, I've been flying this thing for several months now and have been having tons of fun with it. Uh, it really is a, a great little airplane. It's a high performance um, pocket rocket biplane basically uh, in a nice small package. Um, uh, as you can see, it, uh, it has a reasonable size to it. But, uh, but it's a relatively uh, small airplane that you're not going to want to take apart, but you don't need to. Uh, it fits really nicely, as you can see, really in the trunk of, of any car. Um, overall, guys, uh, my first impression of this thing when I got it out of the box was just the quality is awesome. Uh, all the parts really fit together really nicely. Uh, the, the, the fit and fish, finish of it was just uh, incredible. Uh, on top of that, um, uh, the flying wires really add a tremendous amount of rigidity to it. Uh, uh, which really explains why it handles um, and flies uh, so precisely. Uh, building it was very fun, no glue at all, um, a lot of screws to put it together. It took about 17 screws, but that was sort of the fun of it, was uh, just screwing the entire airplane together. Uh, there's six additional screws that you use to uh, attach the, uh, the flying wires, and, uh, and that's a relatively easy process. Um, um, overall, guys, um, I'd say that this really is a plane uh, for an intermediate uh, to advanced uh, flyer. Uh, it does tons and tons of aerobatics. You name it, you can do it. Um, uh, spins, loops, rolls, point rolls. has a very powerful rudder for doing uh, stall turns and uh, knife edge flying. Uh, and uh, overall, guys, just uh, really, really uh, impressed with it. Now, the following uh, video you're going to see, uh, the review video, is just that. It's a review. They're really uh, wasn't too much or really any additional uh, things that I had to do to this plane. It really built just like the instruction manual said, which is uh, definitely really nice. So I'm going to be showing you all the parts up close uh, so you can get a good idea of uh, the, the kind of the high-end quality of the foam on this thing uh, uh, and, uh, and the assembly process because it was very simple. In fact, I, I put the whole airplane together in the video and just sort of show you where all the screws are to put together and how simple it really is. Um, uh, what I do cover, uh, in addition to that also, is um, how to put the flying wires in. Uh, the instructions got me through it, but they look like they could be a little confusing, so I talk you through which wires go where, and then, uh, and then how you secure them uh, into place. Anyway guys, without further delay, let's get on to the review video. To start off the review of the Freewing 750mm Ultimate uh, biplane, you can see the outside of the box here. The shipping box arrived in nice shape uh, at my doorstep. And you can see the uh, inner box here with the uh, uh, different color options and specifications on the outside of the box. Let's go ahead and get the box top off and take a look inside. With the box top removed, we can see everything's very nicely packaged inside the foam crate. All individually bagged uh, and secured in place with uh, foam braces. Let's go ahead and get everything out of the box, lay them out, and uh, give you a better view of all the parts. Here's a layout of all the parts that came out of the box, and man, I am thoroughly impressed with this thing. It's made out of EPO foam but it's very difficult to tell, especially with the wings. They have such a nice uh, painted finish. The decals are applied very nicely, and it's just smooth. It almost has like a fiberglass-like appearance to it. Uh, starting at the top, the parts, we have the uh, fuselage, which has the uh, motor, speed controller, servos, uh, and Dean's connector all installed and ready to go. You have the two main wings, upper and lower, finished hinges, hinged servos mounted and ready to go. Uh, the uh, elevator and horizontal stabilizer hinged and, and uh, with uh, uh, all the control horns on them. Same thing with the rudder, real nice quality, real precision, precision parts. Uh, the two cabans, instruction manual here. And then right here in the center you see we have the uh, landing gear uh, set that's uh, already ready to just sort of snap in place. Some flying wires as well, as well that will keep this thing really rigid. And then uh, a bag of parts, a uh, screwdriver, and everything uh, to put this thing together. Looks like it's just nuts and bolts uh, to put this thing together. Uh, let me now show you a close-up uh, of some of these parts and just show you how nice they really are. The first part up I want to show you guys is the uh, fuselage. Real impressed with it from front to back. Lots of attention to detail was uh, paid on this thing. Uh, a plus, first of all, for putting a pile in there. There's a lot of planes nowadays, sometimes they don't stick a pile in there. Uh, it's nice that they put a, a lightweight one in there uh, that you don't have to mess with and the canopy is uh, already sealed. Uh, at the front end of this thing, there's even a little bit of riveting detail, which is actually kind of nice. The decals, or the stickers, I should say, are nicely applied to this thing. Uh, up front, a nicely painted spinner uh, that really nicely matches the rest of the airplane. 
uh, a high quality uh, seven six propeller that looks uh, really tough uh, and lots of cooling in here you can see the motor in there the cooling two cooling intakes and one down here and this one here goes straight to the speed controller that you can easily see right in there and then there's plenty of, of, of pass through where it passes over the the, the motor speed controller battery over the servos and then they even put a cooling hole in here and more and more of these planes are starting to have uh, cooling uh, holes from the factory so uh, A plus here on the cooling system for this thing. Uh, battery hatch is right up front here uh, very typical of free wing how they're starting to do most of theirs with a little piece of tape and some magnets. I usually like to see it open up the other way but uh, this plane is probably not going to have a problem with this thing popping over S open. Super nice uh, battery compartment and they even gave you uh, a strap with actually three slots. So if you use a longer battery or, or a shorter battery, uh, you can adjust the strap accordingly, which I really like. Um, one thing I do see that I might add later, uh, I'm not really sure, I may put a, a hole or so in this uh, firewall just to let a little bit of air uh, pass from the motor uh, over to here, but probably not a necessary thing. Uh, they got pins here and two rare earth magnets uh, to hold this thing in place. And you can see it's a really nice, uh, really tight uh, latch on fit. Uh, as I move along the, uh, the side here up to the top, you can see the, uh, the, the, the command that holds the, uh, uh, the struts that hold the uh, top wing on. And uh, uh, real nice, uh, it's made of plastic, but it's real tough and it's uh, probably glued on there pretty darn secure. So you, know, you can pretty much hold this thing by this, it's uh, pretty, pretty tough. Um, as we move along the underside, uh, you can see here, uh, these are probably uh, for bolting on the landing gear. It looks like the landing gear just pops into place with two screws. Uh, a couple of uh, screw slots here uh, or threads uh, where you're going to put the, uh, the lower wing on. And you can see the servos that are pre-installed for the, uh, the elevator and the rudder. And it looks like there is a uh, dual elevator rod going all the way to the back. And uh, as we move along here, um, you can see these are for the elevator, it looks like. And this one here is for the rudder. Um, also, a couple of slots back here that you can kind of see. I'll try and point that out well for you so if the camera will focus on it. Right here, two slots it looks like for... Um, some flying wires uh, for the elevator to kind of keep that uh, rigid and secure. Uh, again, as we move along here to the tail, uh, you can see the uh, connectors that Freewing provides. Again, uh, as if you've seen any of my other videos, I think these are the best um, clevises in the business. I just think they are, uh, uh, just have a really nice streamlined look to them. Uh, they're pretty tough and they always put a, a, good, a decent piece of fuel tubing on them uh, to put around everything. So uh, A plus on, uh, on the linkages on this thing. Looks like the tail just uh, pops right on a position and bolts into place with uh, one screw here that goes under the underside. Uh, as we move along the other side here, uh, looks like an area for some flying wires both here, 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 and here to help make the uh, wings uh, more rigid. I'm really anxious to get this thing together. It just looks like a really nice airplane, really nice fit on everything. Uh, again, guys, A plus for this fuselage. All right, the next two parts up are the, uh, uh, the rudder and the uh, elevator unit. These things are uh, really, really nice quality. Now, right off the bat, uh, the rudder, uh, you can definitely tell it's EPO, uh, and it's constructed very well. It has your typical uh, free wing drop in T hinges. Uh, that are also backed up with, uh, you know, just a foam hinge. Uh, real nice connector, real nice tailwheel assembly. They did a real good job uh, attaching this in a real rugged way uh, to the rudder to, to hopefully keep it from uh, breaking off because they do take a lot of abuse. But uh, this looks like a tough one. Uh, nice plastic parts here, uh, right here, here, and here. Nice plastic fittings. Uh, that should allow this thing to go together really nicely. You can see right here, looks like a hole backed up uh, with plastic uh, that's going to be for uh, the flying wires, again, for the elevator and rudder support, so everything is real rigid, because this is quite an aerobatic plane, so uh, you definitely want the whole tail uh, to be rigid. Uh, like the wings, which I'll show you up here next, uh, this uh, horizontal stabilizer and elevator, I'm not sure if this is EPO, but it has just this really clean, really smooth finish and a very high gloss uh, paint job to it. Uh, and as you can see, all the horns are already applied like the rudder is and everything's painted. Uh, but you can see the attachments here for uh, the flying wires uh, uh, that go, uh, look like uh, two of them run through, I guess, and uh, uh, looks like two go up the top, two go down the bottom under the, the tail fin. And uh, everything, all the decals are nicely applied on this thing. But uh, Real impressed with this. It's razor thin. It's very thin foam. 
uh, but it should be very rigid uh, with the uh, with the flying wires. Uh, again, real top notch on these uh, tail components. Next up are the wing commands uh, that uh, separate the two wings and hold them together. You can see here there's an arrow here that uh, obviously probably points up uh, to tell you where to attach this thing to. Uh, plastic parts at the top and the bottom and uh, uh, little areas here where flying wires are going to be attached to. It looks like uh, uh, this is going to plug into the wing and there will be some flying wires attached to these. So uh, nice decal applied to them. Uh, once again guys, top notch on these parts. Next up we have the uh, lower wing. I'm, I'm not going to show you both of them because both of them are very much the same. I chose the uh, bottom wing here because it's the one with the servos in them. Um, but really impressed with this thing. Again, I'm not sure if this is EPO foam or not, but uh, it's very rigid and you can see here that it's got a um, it's got a spar that they put in here that's taped over that they run all the way down the wing. So both wings have a real tough spar in them uh, that make this thing really rigid and a very, very glassy. Again, almost like it's almost similar to like a fiberglass type finish on this thing. Uh, and the paint doesn't seem to want to chip either. So uh, it has a nice finish to it. Uh, and, and I'm just, like I said, real impressed with the overall quality of it. Foam hinges all the way around. All the linkages are connected. Uh, and you can see in the middle of the ailerons, both top and uh, bottom, uh, that they have uh, these little uh, linkages right in here. So you can connect a rod between the two. So the lower servos actually will drive uh, uh, both sets of ailerons. So there's actually four ailerons on this plane. Uh, and it should make for a super roll rate. Probably the only thing you want to check is to make sure that the servos are not loose. Sometimes these glued-in servos uh, can be loose in their trays, but it looks like these are uh, pretty secure. Three wing bolts to put this uh, lower servo on, and you can see down here uh, that uh, they have the wires already run and uh, ready to go. Uh, real impressed with this thing, guys. I, I don't know if I've actually seen uh, a plane with uh, a foam plane really with this kind of uh, finish on it and uh, I'm real impressed to put this thing uh, together and uh, see how everything fits. Um, once again guys, uh, A plus, real, real happy with, uh, with the quality of uh, these wings. The last few items to show you first off is the, uh, the flying wires that they give you to secure between the wings uh, and the tail surfaces to keep everything uh, rigid. Uh, and uh, they also give you a bag of uh, parts here with a uh, screwdriver and uh, the linkages that connect uh, both the upper and lower ailerons uh, together. Uh, also, uh, really uh, nice quality, something Freewing does, very nice plastic painted doublers, okay, and, uh, and this little tailpiece to uh, secure your wings and tail in, in place. And I've used these on a lot of, uh, of Freewing planes. And uh, they definitely, uh, you know, this thing fits together nice with, uh, with that kind of an arrangement. Uh, and last up here, we've got the um, landing gear system. This is a prefabricated uh, wheel pant system. Uh, and sometimes these things are troublesome, but uh, these spin very freely. They did a good job at the factory uh, putting these things together so they don't bind and the wheel pants are on straight. Uh, but uh, this thing will just pop into place and two screws will uh, install it on the airplane. So... Uh, overall, a uh, really nice, uh, nice landing gear system on this plane. Last but not least is the instruction manual, and uh, this looks like a, a pretty nice one. Uh, Freewing uh, instruction manuals usually are. Uh, I had a chance to kind of glance through this, and it does look like it's pretty much a, uh, a straightforward nuts and bolts. Um, one important thing to note here is the center of gravity. I try and show this in all the videos. Looks like it's 50 to 60 millimeters aft of the leading edge. Uh, of the upper wing uh, moving backwards. Uh, so, you know, that looks like a pretty good flying uh, spot. If I have a problem with that, I'll definitely point that out to you as I get to flying this thing. Uh, another thing to note with free wing instruction manuals, they always tell you to, to put screws on, but, but at least in this part, uh, just like the T6 Texan review I did, they don't really give you the screw sizes. So you actually have to just flip back uh, to the back page here. And, uh, and here it tells you exactly which size screws to use for each sort of sub-assembly. So as you're building it, you have to sort of glance uh, back here and look at the, the proper size screws to use and uh, pick those out of the hardware bag. Uh, one unique feature that I did find in here that was a little bit different, but not a big deal. Uh, they showed here when you put the rudder and the elevator together in the first step that uh, there's uh, some twin adhesive uh, to stick the rudder and the, uh, and the elevator together. 
Uh, normally I would actually use some contact cement on that, but it looks like they've kind of thought ahead and given you some double adhesive tape uh, to put this thing together with. But overall this thing looks like a, a straightforward build and I'll get on with the building process. And if I have any issues or any upgrades, suggestions, comments, uh, or things that I would do differently on this thing, uh, I'll definitely uh, be sure to point them out in this building guide. Here's the completed ultimate biplane guys and I am really impressed with how easily this airplane went together. All the parts are a very, very precise fit and everything goes together with, uh, with screws. Um, I just kind of can't get over uh, actually how much fun it was to actually put this thing together uh, because it went together really just the way the instructions said and uh, uh, I'm just sort of blown away by the precision uh, in which they manufactured everything. Uh, I'm going to sort of talk you through the, the building process of this thing. It actually is relatively simple and uh, as I just showed you back there in the instruction manuals in the uh, previous clip, uh, it does show the uh, elevator and the rudder going together with some double-sided tape, but uh, I really didn't see any in the box, so I just used some double-sided scotch tape uh, on here and put them together. And I use, if you see my videos, I use double-sided scotch tape for everything. You, you can use contact cement there if you want, but uh, really you just put the two together, the uh, elevator and the rudder, and then there's a really nice plastic uh, clip in there that this thing just tongue and grooves right in and goes down. Uh, and then uh, on the underside here, you put uh, two screws, one here, one here, and uh, this plastic doubler goes in and the tail is done. It's secured in position. All you need to do is connect your clevises for your elevators uh, here and here and your rudder and uh, you are good to go with the tail. Uh, then you move on to the front and uh, really uh, it's this easy. You take uh, this command and this command right here and uh, I'll go ahead and zoom in with two screws so that you can see right here. Let me see if I can flip this up and show you a better picture of that. Two screws right here and right here. You go ahead and you attach the commands uh, to the lower wing and then the whole lower wing goes uh, right onto the bottom of the fuselage and simply secures uh, with these three screws right here. And as you can see from this shot, uh, it's real easy. These uh, plastic doublers have these arrows, one here and one here, and they just point forward. These are a real nice pressed tight and tight fit. They fit very precisely in there. You do have to push them in there a little bit, but uh, these three screws secure the uh, lower wing uh, in position. Once the lower wing is on, you take the top wing and you go ahead and you just rest it right on top of here, uh, on top of the two cabans and uh, the, uh, the center mount here. And then uh, once again, two screws right here, two screws right there into that caban. And then you have the two um, center uh, wing doublers. I'm gonna zoom in on those. You can see this one has a little F on it for front. This one has a little B for back. And, uh, and that secures your top squing, uh, screw. Uh, top wing. And these are all self-tapping screws, so they go in there uh, really easily. Then you flip it over, and uh, you can see right here the landing gear just pops into place. And with these two really uh, wide head, uh, or kind of washer head screws, uh, you put the landing gear in place. And for the major assembly of the airplane, uh, that's it. This airplane is uh, together. Next up, you go ahead and you insert uh, and you install the flying wires. When installing the flying wires, there's, uh, there's only six wires. And as you can see here uh, from the picture in the, uh, in the manual, uh, there's, there's six wires and at the end, there's a crimped end. And what you do is you feed uh, this end in first and you literally, just like a needle and thread, you just sort of thread this uh, uh, through, the, uh, through the wings. Now, I went ahead and broke this down. Uh, they didn't really uh, kind of spell it all out, but it was actually very easy to figure out. Uh, and again, there's uh, six total wires. Uh, the first one, there's only one wire that's 1,200 millimeters. It's the longest one. And I took a little, uh, I took the sticker off the uh, parts bag, and the bags uh, for uh, these free-wing airplanes are really nice because they lay out the length and the number of parts that are in uh, every, every bag. So there's actually an equipment list, they call it, for every bag uh, and all the parts. So uh, the first step is really just running this one wire here, which is the longest one, 1,200 millimeters, and it starts right here. You literally thread it through the little notch here. Uh, you roll it, uh, you just thread it through the center section, thread it through these parts, and they number them, one, two, three, four. So it's really like a connect the dots kind of thing. 
run it through here, run it down through here, and then once it gets in here, you put a really tiny, small, a really small, uh, as you can see here, self-tapping screw, and uh, that will lock the uh, the entire thing into place. Now, to give you a close-up of that, uh, you can see right here how easy of a deal this is, uh, and you can see back here. Uh, it started back here, number one, the back wire with that little um, crimped end on it. Ran through the uh, center here, down to the other side and across, back to the center, and then right back here again. And you can see how that was uh, secured uh, in position there with that screw. Then you just cut the end off, and uh, you don't have to pull them tight or anything because you don't want to warp the wings or anything. But they're a neat, really nice uh, metal flying wire that really makes the wings... Uh, quite rigid so really impressed kind of with the system and how they do it uh, and then on to the next uh, couple of wires uh, the next pair that you put on real simple these are the 520 millimeter uh, wires there's two of them you start at the uh, back here thread it through go up to the top command back down here you pull it through and just make it nice and snug and then you tighten that wire up then you do the same for the other wing uh, you get to the tail uh, same kind of deal uh, there are three 310 millimeter wires. One that goes up from the elevator to the rudder all the way through and then back down to the other elevator and then two underneath and they start on this side. They run across into this little tab that they fit into and into the other side of the, uh, in, under, the uh, under the underside, other side of the elevator here and then you tighten those down uh, with two screws. And then once you're all done with this, you, again, you, you, you cut the ends of them off. I'd say leave maybe half an inch sticking out uh, and that way, if you need to um, tighten it or just change the wire, uh, you can do it at a later time. But uh, uh, the first wire, again, just runs all the way through here and back. The second wire runs from the back uh, 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 little mount back there uh, up through here and then all the way to the front where you screw that in position. I'll give you a close-up of that one, too, so you can kind of see what that looks like. You can see that's the, uh, the, the ending of it where the screw holds it in place. And you can see the back where, uh, where it starts off, where you start the threading, and there's that little crimped end. Uh, I'll flip this thing over to the tail here, so you can get an idea here uh, what the tail looks like. Same thing here. You can see the crimped end on this side. You thread it all the way through the rudder to the other side, and then you go ahead and screw it down, uh, and then cut the end of it off. Uh, I'll show you the underside because this is just a little tiny bit different. Same thing. Uh, the crimped ends are on this side. They thread all the way through uh, these two center pieces and there's just a little tab here that you can lift up and uh, just kind of feed the wire underneath there. And then on this side, uh, you go ahead and uh, secure them with the screw and uh, cut the end off. And again, probably leave about, you know, maybe, maybe 10 millimeters or half an inch on there. So if you need to adjust them later, you can. Uh, if you have to, you can always get different wires and, and replace the wires. It's really quite, uh, quite simple. But uh, uh, the last final step to putting this thing together uh, after you're done with all that is uh, just connecting your linkages here uh, and just make sure both of your ailerons are even, uh, that they're both uh, lined up with the trailing edge here, uh, and you can adjust your linkages and put those on. Now, you can put them on any way you want. Uh, they show this uh, on the other way. Uh, basically come in from the back and snap on, but I put mine from the inside out. And uh, they actually put this steel pin right in here. And on the lower side, they put the a steel pin uh, that's glued on there. So uh, you get both of those on there, line up both the ailerons. And I found really no warping in these ailerons either. You can see here, everything is really precision. You can see how nice uh, of a job they did keeping all the control surfaces true. And uh, this plane should roll tremendously with uh, four, um, four moving ailerons. But uh, anyway, guys, that pretty much is it. Uh, it is a screw together uh, uh, um, operation here. And this thing, I'm just real pleased with how easy it went together and actually how much fun it was to assemble. Mounting your receiver inside the Ultimate can be uh, pretty challenging, but uh, there is a hole here in the uh, battery tray uh, to, to, to mount the receiver, and you can just put some Velcro. You can see here my Futaba receiver is just Velcroed uh, right down there to the foam. And you can see way, way back there, you can push all the wires back there, and everything's kind of neat and clean out of the way. Uh, the two uh, antennas, you can really mount anywhere. I put them on both sidewalls. You can see uh, one right there mounted uh, horizontally, 
and you can see the other one way back in there. I just both of them are taped to the wall, and you can see that uh, that one back there is uh, mounted vertically. Uh, and again, you want to have uh, both those antennas perpendicular to each other somewhere in there. But uh, anyway, as you can see, even though it's a tight fit, uh, it's real easy to get your uh, receiver in place, and uh, Freewing gives you a good place uh, right in the center to mount it. Here's a quick look at the uh, Enrich Power 4 cell. 1600 uh, milliamp 30c pack uh, that comes from Motion RC and it's actually kind of designed to go with this airplane so it's a real nice fit in there uh, it would be nice if it would lay flat uh, uh, and, and give us some more space actually but uh, but it does fit in here vertically and like I said with the uh, with the uh, stock battery strap here it did seem to strike uh, the, op uh, the the top side here of the uh, the hatch but again you can cut some of this out even if you need to or just crease it in uh, and you can see it fits in there really nice. But uh, uh, this plane is going to have some serious power. It'll be really fun to fly because, uh, you know, it's so, it's so small, you know, about 29 and a half inch wingspan. Uh, it has lots of thrust. I mean, it doesn't seem really like it should be, even should be a four cell airplane. I know it flies great on three because I've seen a couple online videos, but uh, it'll be a real rocket with this uh, four cell pack. But, but again, it is specially designed, I think, to go into this thing. And uh, it definitely is a uh, really, uh, really nice fit in there. And again, if you do cut away a little bit or, or crease, crease the inside of this uh, battery compartment or, uh, you know, cut into the foam just a little bit, you'll see that it really just uh, fits in there quite nicely. For all the flying that we did in this video, we set the airplane up basically for two different styles of flying. Uh, the first way was uh, with a four cell pack for uh, pretty much normal, uh, high-performance uh, aerobatic flying. Uh, the second way we set it up was using three-cell battery packs for 3D flying. Now let me go ahead and break down uh, the difference in the two. For the higher speed, high-performance setup for this airplane, uh, I used uh, both of these four-cell packs, uh, enriched packs from uh, Motion RC. Uh, the 1600 and both the 2200 fit in there just fine. Um, the, the 2200 tends to extend the weight a little bit far into the uh, fuselage, whereas the 1600, uh, all the weight of it is really far up front. Uh, but in either case, I did find that uh, putting a little bit of nose weight in the airplane, in fact an ounce and a half, right on the firewall, tend to play, makes, the, makes the plane a little bit more stable in really high speed flight. Uh, I found that without even just a little bit of weight up there, the plane tended to pitch up and down a little bit. Uh, you can easily take the spinner and prop off. There's a screw right here, right here, and then one underneath the cowl comes off, and there's a nice big plastic firewall in there that you can put uh, an ounce and a half of weight in there uh, to make the plane uh, uh, much more stable. When setting this plane up for 3D flying, we found uh, the plane actually flew much better on, uh, on three cells. The advantage of three cells uh, is uh, that it actually makes the airplane quite a bit lighter for 3D flying, and we used a range anywhere from 13 up to 1800. Uh, and even using the 1800 shifts the center of gravity back. Now the difference in uh, the center of gravity uh, on this airplane from the high speed setup to the 3D setup is pretty significant. In fact, with the nose weight in the front of the airplane and the uh, four cell pack, I found that actually somewhere around um, uh, 40 centimeters aft of the leading edge was a good CG, whereas the book actually showed uh, 50 to 60. Uh, and that made it really stable. But for the 3D setup, you want it actually much farther back, behind 50, probably more like 60, 65 or so, uh, the CG. We didn't actually do a measurement of it, but we found that uh, having that aft CG uh, or farther aft CG for 3D flying uh, really, uh, really made the plane uh, do 3D much better. Um, also, in addition, we, uh, we put a different prop on it for 3D flying. Uh, the stock prop is a 7-6 uh, prop and gives the plane uh, pretty good performance, pretty good speed. But uh, you know, you want a little bit more bite and a little bit more of a, um, of a finer pitch in the prop. And uh, when Steve Washington set this thing up, uh, he actually said, let's just use a Park Flyer prop, and this thing worked great. It's uh, pretty much uh, a, um, as you can see right here, it's, a, it's an eight by three eight uh, Park Flyer prop that you can really get at any hobby shop. This thing fit in there, uh, actually uh, bolted right in really with uh, Pretty much no modification. I did find that the front part of the spinner, where you just had to shave a little bit it off where the leading edge here touches the uh, the spinner. I just use a hobby knife and cut it, cut uh, a little bit of it out right at the field, and uh, and uh, and that was the setup that you saw. All the 3D flying that you saw uh, was with actually an 18 
Uh, we even used a 15 and a 1300 milliamp pack in the airplane, uh, and just this Park Flyer pop prop. Now the speed uh, was reduced a bit, but uh, but for 3D flying uh, with this battery, this prop, and uh, the CG uh, a little farther aft of where they recommend, uh, we found that uh, the airplane uh, did uh, 3D. Uh, uh, much better than in the stock configuration. One real important item to note about the uh, control surface deflection in the Ultimate uh, is the uh, aileron deflection. Now, if you're going to be doing 3D flying with this, you're going to want mostly full deflection and everything. But even in some cases when flying 3D, you're going to want to tone them down a little bit because this plane does have four working ailerons and at full rate, uh, this airplane has an extremely high roll rate and it's very sensitive. So. Uh, when Steve was setting this up, he went ahead and put in uh, actually 70% travel uh, for the ailerons. Uh, and that really actually toned the airplane down a, down a bit and made it uh, much more flyable, you know, both in, in 3D uh, and in, uh, especially in, uh, in the high speed, high performance configuration. So set in 70% of, uh, of full travel and you'll find that that uh, is really just what you need. Uh, to fly this plane in uh, most configurations. Yet another real critical control surface in this airplane is the uh, the elevator. Um, uh, for 3D flying, you want all the surfaces to have a lot of travel in them. But uh, you know, when you're doing high speed flying, especially in this airplane, I found it to be uh, pretty pitch sensitive. Um, unless you know you tone this down a little bit. This is at 100% travel, and it seemed to work okay here. 100% or even a little bit less. Uh, for high speed flying really helps the uh, helps out with the pitch stability and uh, that reduced travel whether it be a hundred ninety or eighty percent of travel combined with that ounce and a half ounce and a half of lead weight in the nose uh, of this plane uh, really makes it track well um, uh, whether you're right side up or inverted I did fly, find that inverted flight with this plane uh, it flew well but was pitch sensitive until I reduced the elevator travel and put an ounce and a half of weight in the nose. And that is a really good, real stable uh, flying configuration if you're going to be flying the plane at higher speeds. Now when it comes to speed of the uh, free wing Ultimate, uh, we clocked it here on the uh, pocket radar just the other day uh, and we got uh, pretty decent speed out of it. 83 miles an hour, 62, 70, 65, 70, 66, and uh, 83. So, uh, for a biplane, uh, not too bad, guys. Uh, pretty decent. Now, with the 3D setup, uh, it's going to be a little bit slower because there's not as much pitch in the prop. So you're probably looking at, uh, overall in the stock configuration, about 70, maybe 75 for an average speed for it, and a little slower in the 3D configuration. All right, guys, that concludes this video on the uh, Freewing Ultimate 750 millimeter uh, biplane from Motion RC. So check it out at uh, motionrc.com. Uh, overall, guys, this really is a, a really phenomenal airplane. It's relatively inexpensive. It goes together really well with screws. It's a very, very fun build, uh, and it's a, a phenomenal flying airplane. Um, uh, again, aerobatics and very, very powerful. Uh, tons and tons of power. We, you can fly it on three or four cells. Uh, uh, on four cells, it's a ballistic missile. It will just point straight up and go out of sight. So. Uh, for anybody who's an intermediate to advanced flyer is looking for a very powerful uh, uh, intermediate to high performance uh, airplane that you could put in your trunk, um, this is the way to go guys. Lots and lots of fun. Anyway guys, uh, once again, thanks for uh, checking out the video. Check us out also on rcinformer.com and rcinformer on Facebook. Uh, once again guys, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.